Hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my youtube channel and here I am Tarun covering Uber Eats clone and uh, in the last videos we talked about Next.js auth uh, with uh, adapters like Prisma and uh, without Prisma just by managing the sessions using just a JWT tokens now this is the the part three you can say because now in this video only we are going to integrate it with our uh, Next.js admin dashboard app so we already have uh, one admin app which you can call as admin dashboard for restaurant managers right this is the user who has appropriate roles like the restaurant admins would be using this particular application admin dashboard app and uh, they, here we are going to use the next auth so next auth is just a library feature rich library that provides authentication and we can use this uh, credential provider credential provider because we will be passing the email and the password user has already been onboarded on our platform either we can create a sign up form for that so user is already onboarded and once user is doing login he should he is creating a restaurant adding the dish menu items and all so for that we will be creating the server pages server side pages and then here how it is the whole thing is going to be work i will try to explain so next is admin dashboard app that will have a simple login app login page and uh, i will try to create a simple sign up for the restaurant admins i mean in the the real world application it's not like everybody can become a restaurant admin and by just doing a simple sign up so we will not be exposing the simple sign up process here we will create a user and that user because in the the real world uh, uber eats app what happens is they onboard the restaurant admins through the back office it's like it's not like uh, they are just giving the registration and anybody can uh, register with the restaurant admin role no so we will just allow user to the login and login will happen with the help of username password and here what we are using is next auth credential provider so that credential provider here is going to call the custom backend we already have auth service in the nest js that is going to return us the data with the cookies now there are two things how can we deal with the cookies and how can we deal with the data returned from the server we are also returning the data so that data can be used to manage the sessions otherwise we also need to deal with these cookies when the data is flowing from here to here through this path right so what is happening is we, we will return the data and that data will initialize the session we don't need to persist the user sessions and the users because they are already in the auth service so no you there is no need to use the database adapters like prisma type rm so once we have the data the uh, the sessions will be initialized uh, using jwt token we will get these jwt session cookies and next this next is yes already managing the sessions using use session and use server side uh, session right those uh, two methods will help us to check if user is logged in or not and whenever you do you are doing a logout we can create a hook so that's what I'm thinking that what we can do is you can do a logout and then through the logout hook or event we also call the logout to the server. So user will uh, get logout currently we are not storing the JWT token anywhere. So JWT token is going to be still valid but here we are we are like customizing the implementation if you try to understand this architecture here auth service works in a, his own way it gives you the cookies maybe the token but here we are using next auth so next auth can override that implementation the the connection of next auth with your custom service is only to validate username password if that is valid it will create its own token session because it's going to use some secret it will create a session for us and that session will be shared between your next js client and next js server side components simple now you will say okay how we are going to make an api call let's say i want to create a restaurant how you are going to do this because this is auth service and then this is a restaurant service so what happens is in this session in the user data in this user data the session data we always going to have a token which is returned from the api token email id and the, the email id role and all all those properties we are going to have inside the token so whatever the data like the even jwt token we are going to encode in this token 
but we don't need to worry about what we are encoding and how this client and server is managing the session because that is happening internally. We don't even need to worry about because this next auth is going to return us cookies, HTTP cookies, uh, which is nothing but a JWT token, HTTP only. We don't need to access it. What we will do is we will create APIs, API routes. Okay, I'm creating API routes to my next JS app. So let's say here I'm going to create an API route to this simple page. Like let's say create restaurant. Right in this API route, we can check if this next auth session exists. If yes, the session exists, what we will do is we are going to, we already have the token, JWT token returned from these APIs because they, that is a part of data and we already are using that data inside for managing the next GS session, right? It's like you can say some, this token which is returned from the auth service is already managed in the session. So we already have that data. What we are going to do is we are going to pass, we are going to make an API call to the restaurant service by passing that token. So what it needs, it needs the token inside cookies. So there is a cookies like a token. Here we are going to pass this auth token or you can say access token. So it's like a custom implementation I'm thinking to build. Uh, it's not easy just to integrate uh, a custom API backend and I mean it's easy if we are not returning cookies and all this is a custom API backend that will return you the maybe the user data okay your email password is valid status code 200 and this is that is all right now but here these API services works on different token right because these are these are the tokens which these services are creating this auth service is creating so if you want to talk to the restaurant service, you need to pass the same token. So the token returned from auth service, I'm going to manage that in this next year, next auth session. And whenever the request will come, I'm not going to make an API call from my client component to service. Some, pe some people will be thinking we can directly make the call to this to this because we already have this uh, cookies uh, session, but these cookies are read only. You cannot even, you cannot read them you cannot extract any information from them so the safest way is call your backend next js uh, api routes that api routes uh, will check okay the session exists using get server side session there is some method get server session if that is true i mean we have the session that then from the session uh, session dot user user will contain these properties here in the session I can have all these properties, let's say the email and access token. That is again a string, right? Long string. These data I can manage inside a session payload. So this access token I would need whenever I'm making API call to my own custom microservices, right? We have a restaurant service, order service and all. This particular dashboard app will use only restaurant service and maybe search service. So I'm going to pass that through this API route. API route, all, I already have my session information. In that session, I am putting the token. And that token has some expiry, I mean, has some validity. If uh, you say from this route, if we are getting unauthorized from the APIs, that means that token has expired or that cookies has expired. So we need to redirect user to the login. So user will log in again and get the refresh, get the new token by doing a login. This is a custom implementation which I was exploring next year uh, with next auth documentation. Like what, what if your external backend service is returning cookies? So then how are you going to do it? The, in that case, what you will be doing is whatever the cookies it is being returned, you can return the same cookies, but to make the API call, you need to persist that cookies in the session variable, right? in the session or inside a JWT payload, you need to, because what happens is, once you log in, we need to create a token payload. Payload contains email and blah, blah, blah. So there is another attribute, okay, cookies value, which we need to send to the restaurant service. So this is going to be fun. It's a custom implementation we are going to do using credential provider. 
and register we don't need to expose to the for the restaurant admin because it's all login you do the login you manage your own restaurant because once you do the login we will give you the token and that token you will be accessing to you will, you will use to call the restaurant service and it will give you only your own restaurant uh, where you can manage the dish menu item update delete and all the operations which we were doing manually through the swagger earlier okay so let's see that so this is our uber eats clone app you are aware about the code and i have also added the demo application which we have created in the last couple of videos this is the demo app we have created we were connecting to this uh, postgres database i think uh, i can move this database to the root because we already have a docker compose at the root so i will remove these but for the demo because people might be looking for this uh, content so let's keep it here now uh, we'll go to the restaurant dashboard and i will try to run this so we are inside restaurant dashboard it should be restaurant admin npm run dev so this is the dashboard app we already have i will move to the login this is a simple login and in this login page this is a server side page here we need to implement the login and we need to create the api routes for the login session and for the next auth so we'll go to our code so here i will try to copy some of the things from the demo because nothing is going to be changed there we can just use as it is api folder i'm going to copy so this is next auth demo and then restaurant dashboard src app api we already have and okay i can delete the whole api okay i copied it app api so this is our api which contains this route and i think we don't have these dependencies so we'll try to add some of them now we'll try to see what all we need strategy jwt adapter we don't need prisma client we don't need even we are not using google and github providers so i will just remove them for now okay so credential provider i need so i will install the next auth here i will go to this particular app so this is uh, restaurant admin restaurant dashboard okay pnpm add next auth and we need prisma adapter let's remove all these things okay i need only one dependency so with this uh, this is our next auth options credentials prisma user here we will customize this implementation So the, the thing is we need to get these email and the password from the, the front end I and mean from the component email and the password and here we need to make a API call to our system right. So here we are going to configure our API call. This is how we are managing the session here also we are going to manage the token access token that we are going to get from the token payload. We will see what is there in the session and the token token and the user here also i will try to decode and put the the existing token there at least we need that in the session access token so this is our next auth what else we need register api route we don't need session this is just checking okay session exists or not simple hello route and then this is the main route we have so we are just using credential provider to make the api call and this is our login page so let's go to the login page so inside auth we have sign in and this is our login component so this is the client side component use client is there you see so sign in uh, page.gsx why not using typescript here 
range it can be simple tsx this is the login and here we are going to call the next of sign in so you can see handle submit this is currently calling authenticate user and that is empty right handle login api integration here so we already know what needs to be done so here we are going to initialize the session and then once this is done at the root level root level layout and all let's see where that is so root level layout that is actually the home page or maybe the dashboard because there is no uh, landing page here so inside app we have dashboard there is a dashboard layout i will see the root layout we can call this as a root layout so here we are going to create a providers that can uh, populate this this session provider information okay so let's do that from our sample i can just copy stuff from here take the help uh, so this is a provider we have created and then this provider i can use in my application okay can i just copy it here so this is my provider and then in the layout you just need to use this provider next auth provider so that all the children can access that and most of the things are inside the app layout okay this is the root layout and this is the auth so i can just simply say is next auth provider and we can import the next auth provider from this we are importing so where are we right now inside root so this is going to come from the providers okay this is the root layout and after that we have all the pages inside this root layout the api and the dashboard so inside that we can use youth session for the client component and uh, another method to check the session exists get server get server session some method is there to check the session at the server side so to sign in uh, what we need to do we just need to do await sign in pass credentials redirect false simple thing right so i will just copy the stuff from here and let's from our demo app to our real app dashboard app i already we already have the sign in login component and handle submit event.prevent default i think we already have a login state which contains these login fields target.id and the value so we need a username and email so let's see what we have configured here we configured here is the email and the password label email 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 and this is the label password so we have two values credential email and the password same we need to get from the login email and the password okay let's see what we have put so these are the two fields login fields email and the password so we are good this is being populated and here authenticate user so this can be simple as sync we are passing credentials sign in we need to import so sign in we can get from next auth so here login is dot tsx we can import sign in from the next auth react let's go to sign in page dot layout sign in and let's see this now what we are going to do i'm going to simply run this and see if it, it, it works currently we are just returning the mock data and see if the session gets executed right and the callback url we can set callback url as a forward slash I mean, this is how we can navigate to the home page. So there was an error. It's, it is a named, named export because we are doing export const. 
so we need to import it as a name uh, name that's import right import next auth provider from here and let's see this is our login page are we getting any error okay next auth localhost 3000 i need to have a env also for it local env which contains uh, okay it already has these variables localhost 3000 and i will just try to play with this let's see what happens there is some error home values not defined so we can debug this src auth login dot ts so let's go to our code src auth uh, login dot js so this is what we are sending okay form values obviously that's that's not there so login state dot login state dot email login state dot password we can see how we are using that login state dot field dot id and you can see field dot name and field dot type you can actually look into this field dot name is email and the password now we can try again and see if anything improves okay api author error. so something uh, happens i mean it is some it is being submitted to the server at least network session and all i need to check which actually break down so sign in this is fine and here after that it start looking for the session provider maybe it's the callback url so let's fix the callback url now it will just keep throwing the errors because it's there is no page like this api auth error i will go to the home page and we'll do the fix for this okay so let's try to see i was facing some some issues i mean i did some build and then i clean up the dot next folder and it was able to it was able to identify my apis earlier what was happening is npm run build so i'm just uh, creating the build maybe there are some typescript errors i mean some file are in tsx some file are in jsx that is uh, i need to fix maybe i will convert them into this so we will we'll fix all these uh, typing errors so for now i will just do dev right so earlier it was not able to identify the api routes any of the api routes somehow now that is fixed i just clean did the cleanup of dot next and uh, npm run build and npm run dev so here you can see this is the place where we are creating the api routes app and uh, so this is our next js dashboard app and i moved uh, these apis to the auth so not sure like uh, because currently this is the directory right default directory is this auth and i moved my all the apis to this and uh, my this auth route hello routes and session routes are now working now let's say if i try to hit uh, app api auth right so how can you test it api hello right and you can see this message that means your apis are running hello next yes where is this is coming from this is coming from this hello route.tsx so this is where i put my all the apis api should be in the app directory but here we are using this group of the grouping of the layouts so it is not able to identify the default place maybe that may be the reason so i put the apis here and my apis are working let's say if i try to do session which is supporting get right so if i okay sessions i need to change i will i change the code of the session uh, because i was testing my routes were not working so if i do api session then you can see hello next js where this is coming from because my apis are here okay so the session code is same as we have written here src app api auth and session so i will just copy this stuff from here and uh, we'll populate that in our session session routes 
now if i try to do the get we can do get right so status fail message you are not logged in that is correct this is the expected message so this is how you will get the session okay now what i will do is i will close all these tabs and then try to do the login so my auth api routes this we have already written and this is my pages sign in page so inside app you can see i have this auth and then i have sign in page so this is my page.tx this is a server page and you can see the server page can import the client only component so this login is the client side component it is using use client and using the use state use effect all sort of react stuff is there because this is use client and no code change here i'm using this authenticate user still there is a callback issue like whenever whenever i'm doing a login it is not redirecting me to the dashboard but we'll try to fix that and now what we will do is let's go to our sign in so this is our simple login screen we will try to reset the layout and then here we will check in the network tab what all calls are being made when you do the login right so when you do the login we are calling sign in so here you can see what all attribute what all calls are being made provider so these are the credentials we this is what we are calling right id name sign in url so once you successfully log in it is giving you this session back right and you can also see some cookies being generated you can see next auth session token i see something from this token like what is the content of this token I think I need to pass my okay. Why it is saying invalid signature? Because I need to pass my key, or I didn't copy this fully. So this is the value I copied it. Okay, I can enter the valid json object invalid signature so let's go to the code payload it is saying invalid signature so i mean this is token it is generated by next auth only we are not creating it it is just looking at the secret and this is like a, it is returning that with the cookies so maybe we are not allowed to see the token it is secured enough and the only thing which we need to figure it out let's say currently what i'm doing is simply login this data currently we are just doing a mock implementation right so here what it is doing is it is going to the network and calling all these all these interactions are happening right i need to figure out the redirection but I am successfully logged in. How I can know that? I can go to the dashboard. And the dashboard, I am using use session. So how I am using it? So if you go to the dashboard page, here this is my another page is dashboard. So inside dashboard in the layout, we are using use session and trying to access the, the session data. User session data. This is the user session data. And I am passing this user session to the header okay that's good we got the header and inside this header we are further passing it to the user menu and here i'm trying to just show the basic information okay what is the the log uh, what is the user email and the password so here you can see username if it, you are not logged in then you can just to show john doy if you are logged in then get the username and the email from your session because this dashboard is currently public we will hide the dashboard even dashboard also because uh, dashboard is the page which user should see only when user is logged in so here we should be able to see the email which we are getting from the token from the session and then we can also show these uh, menu items let's see for now if i try to reload the page you can see uh, id at the rate gmail.com this is what the session we are returning from the apis you can see 
this is the user we are returning from the api so that will tell uh, the front end okay you are logged in even i can create a protected route and i can check if you are logged in or not so inside this uh, auth api i can do i can just check the session right session should tell me okay am i logged in or not so i can hit the session api session and you can see this why this is giving you the data because your session does exist now instead of this there are these are some redirection fixes i need to do now we can do the implementation with our auth api so we just need to start our auth service and need to do the login with that and this dashboard page so we should show only default this sign in page only to the user if user is logged in let's say if i'm doing it something like this page.gsx here also this is a server component so what we can do is we can access the session here and if session does exist then do, do not go to the login page this directly go to the dashboard page so before fixing any other error what i'm doing is i'm converting all these into typescript so i will understand okay having the component in typescript is easy i mean and you identify okay these are the possible problems and you can we can fix it right away so gsx all will get converted into tsx or ts file i don't know why i created them as a gsx in the first version but now it's time to fix all of these and convert them into tsx so i will just fix them and uh, then we will just connect and see where are we on the next auth implementation so i have converted all my component to tsx i mean that looks nice because and currently i'm just overriding the typings to any for now then we will fix it and here we can see we have these two pages api auth and i still have that issue of uh, redirection so what i'm doing is let's say here is the sign in and i'm just trying to do router.push because it's a client only component we can use a router navigation to dot do, to navigate between pages so router.push this callback url somehow not working i don't know the reason i tried all different options router.push dashboard and on the dashboard there is a logout right on the header we have this logout button so when you do the logout here this is also this is how you can pass the argument callback url on the sign out you can navigate to a particular page so that works fine for me and uh, that is actually doing the the job which i want so what i can do is simply i'm on the sign in page currently we are doing mock implementation i am landed on the dashboard page and you can see this is talk, talking about the user session because you can see it is using this uh, the the mock user we are using i can change the mock user and see if it is reflecting so we'll go to our apis and here i will just change tk sharma and the name is tk sharma and i will try to change the user so here i did the logout and i can see this updated user right and this is same in the session and you can see my cookies so sometimes when you see any configuration error while changing the configuration always remember that you need to clean the cookies otherwise you would stuck and you will spend some maybe hours to fix the issue if you see any server configuration error while changing things here and there always remove these cookies first and then do the login logout okay so now how we are doing it we are uh, now we need to integrate it with the auth service we are going to call the auth service get the login credentials get the token and all and put the token inside the session variable so that same token can be used through this these api other uh, protected api routes to create restaurant update restaurant and uh, add dish menu items so here we are going to just make a xios call so first let's say docker compose up because uh, we need the containers i will check if anything is running 
docker compose down and i can do docker compose up here now all the containers should be up and running and i can do npm run start dev for the auth app and the admin app okay so this is the user app and we have one more app which is the restaurant service we can start both of them and they are running on i think 3001 we can check that in the readme file where this user service is running so i documented that somewhere that which service is running on which port yes so the user service is running on 3002 you can actually actually call that using the proxy also and because here we are doing login so we can use proxy and uh, elastic search okay i got it so elastic container is not running we need to start this and this is auth service let's say first do the auth integration and for the auth service we just need to use this proxy because we need to hit the proxy service so let's run the proxy also this is proxy yes npm run start dev and we will just hit the proxy from this uh, next js and we are going to hit auth service localhost 3000 one api v1 auth service login okay so to integrate it with our apis what i have done is simply uh, in the next auth in the routes this is the only simple logic we need to add i mean i will uh, refactor this code but simply we uh, can just make an api call right this is our uh, api endpoint through the proxy auth service that you can also see at localhost 3002 i guess docs this is our auth service right and this is api v1 auth login and to access it through the proxy you need to use this url auth service auth login and we are passing email and the password that's it if uh, we receive the data i mean because we are putting it in try catch because there may be a 404 or uh, user not found all these errors may come right so in the catch block you should not return anything if you return anything that means the data is successful you received the data so here you need to write a custom logic use some toaster or something like that to notify that you uh, you have entered a wrong data otherwise if you got the data then this is how i'm getting the session to access token email id from the user payload even i can try to log console.log what data i'm getting from the api so okay this is what we are doing now this is the only change i have done simply okay i will uh, check the demo again here i will do the logout and hello user is already exist so i will try to log in with this here this is giving me the access token right so this user is correct user first i will try to enter a invalid user nothing will happen i mean it will not be able to create a session here the session is null session is empty and if i try to enter the valid password and try to do it then i am getting redirected and you can see on the top i can see my user that's correct hello at the readgmail.com and how i am redirecting i change that logic a little bit because uh, we need to redirect only if i am successfully logged in so here we can do use effect with the session variable okay if user is there that means we need to redirect to the dashboard we should not do it re redirection without user successfully logged in so use effect hook will do the job and here we can see i can do the logout and login again to check the session and all i don't like these pop-ups coming here and there and i will go to the application so here console i want to check the network so this is my session token right so here what do we have is the email 
uh, inside a user we are setting only email uh, ta -ta -ta, let me just check because there should be lots of other data also which we are setting so i will check in the console what we are uh, printing here here you can see i'm printing permissions access token and all inside the session so we'll go to our next auth here i'm returning access token data root access token and in the callback session token dot access token okay this is inside session what are we getting so currently i'm trying to law i'm trying to put populate all these i'm i'm returning all these things id data dot user id so data dot user id email permissions and access token okay so once this data arrives this is what is forming our session right so here we can also log it so whenever you use youth session so current session and we are overriding whatever we are getting from the token so ta -ta -ta, because this is the decode to it can be just a, a variable which we are trying to print so if i try to do here is console.log what do we have in session and what do we have in in token this this callback will be executed whenever we are uh, invoking this session so i will try to log out and log in again and here you can see i am getting something like this this is the user and this is my custom token token doesn't have this because uh, what it is doing is it is creating its own token variable and inside session it has the user email and uh, expires we need to customize this behavior so let me explore the documentation like how we can override these parameters and how we can populate more information from the data which we are receiving from our custom backend okay i think it's a small fix what we need to do here is while creating the token in the token callback because that is coming from the user object this u object is the same whatever you are returning from here email access token and id so you can populate it in the same way so this is what you are putting inside a token and same you can see populating here also the id access token hello so this token only this session is using and whatever whenever you do the use session that is being populated on the ui so here i can add another entry access token u dot access token access token i'm returning from here you can see access token so it will be populated in the token and the same we can use in the session access token dot access token and now i can see that in the demo also i will try to log in and i will try to show so this is the login okay here this is my session object and it contains both the properties access token this is what we need to access our uh, external microservices and this is our credentials and you can also see the cookies being set and this is the big one because it is decoding lots of data inside it so this is how we can customize the behavior this is my final objective i wanted to have so this is the whole payload in the token we are storing email access token this is the additional property i'm putting this access token i mean we will talk about the security but this is how it is going to work and when you do the logout this session will become empty and we need to do the login again to get this access token to access our external apis so that's it guys uh, we will refactor and we will do the, some cleanup but this is how the dashboard admin authentication will work now we will create a private routes which will be you can access only when user is logged in and we, you can create a restaurant dish menu items and all i mean just a forms and listing items this is what we have in the dashboard